this is Peggy Kim. I am the founder of I Stand TV, and I'm so excited to introduce to you Patrick Andy. Patrick is a musician, composer, and a very dear friend. And um, Patrick hails from Madagascar. Yes. And uh, so, Patrick, could you just kind of tell me a little bit about your, you know, when did you come from Madagascar? How did you? What was your plan in coming to the United States? Thank you for having me today, and uh, hi everyone. Uh, yes, yeah, so my name is Patrick Andy. I'm from Madagascar. Um, I moved to the state in 2000, so it's been 20 years now that I've been here. Wow. And uh, you know, I came here to play music. I don't have any other skills besides playing the bass. <laughs> Did you already have a gig here in the United States or you were just like, all right, I'm going, I, I'm, I'm just going to try to do this? No, no, I, I didn't have anything. I, I didn't even speak English. I just, I just like, you know, I, uh, I know that there are a lot of great musicians, especially here in New York. So I just want to, I just want to play music with like a lot of different amazing musicians. So I came here and, uh, um, I stay with a, a friend of mine. He helped me to, you know, to to know, start like meeting people. Uh, he even got me a job like the first couple of years when I first got here because I didn't speak any English and I didn't know anyone. So he was like, "Dude, you you kind of need to make some money, man." So he got me a job at a warehouse for like the first three years, and then I start meeting people. So you know, I. I quit the job and start doing music full time. Wow. And what's the, the instrument that you play? What is that? Oh, so my main instrument is the bass, but um, I play um, guitar just a little bit. Um, especially if it's like African guitar, like African music, then I, I can totally play it. And African music is so diverse in and of itself. So if you talk about the style of music that that you play and that you've been influenced by, how would you describe that? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, cause uh, I came from Madagascar, so um, I can play like the music from my country, from Madagascar. And back then, back in Madagascar, we listened to a lot of, a lot of um, Af um, music from Africa. Uh, it's called Sukus. And so I can play, yes, yeah, Sukus. Sukus, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, the, I, th I could be wrong, but Sukus is probably the most popular um, music in Africa. It's like a guitar driven. Uh, any African hear Sukus, they go crazy, including myself. Why did you pick the bass? Um, so first I wanna, um, my dad, he had, uh, um, he had two guitars at home, right? So I just play guitar first, but then, um, I, I heard a song on, a, on TV and on radio, Bat Madagascar. It's a song by, I don't know if you remember the uh, artist called TLC. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so TLC has this song, uh, uh, Waterfalls. Uh -huh. And for some reason, I really like the bass line on, on that song. And then, um, and then, you know, when I heard that song, I'm like, I think I want to play the bass. And then I started to go to my church in Madagascar, to this church in Madagascar, and the bass player is like really amazing. So like, you know, I go to church and I spend most of my time at church listening to the bass. And, uh, and even like when I, when, uh, when I left the church, when I go home and, you know, when, I ho when I'm home by myself, I try to walk like the bass player. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I watch him. That's all I did. <laughs> watch him. I used to know like the everything, like the way he moves and everything. Wow. <laughs> and back That's then, awesome, um, right? yes. Yeah, so, and, and back then I didn't, I, I didn't know that there are like a lot of different bases. Like I didn't know that there are like five string bases, six strings bases. I didn't know anything about that. I thought all the bases have like four strings. So on my guitar, I took off the last two strings of my guitar and I played like a bass because I didn't, I didn't own a bass. So when, um, when I start playing on my church, when I start joining an, another church, which became my church, when they handed me the bass, uh, 
since I already played a uh, four string guitar at home, I didn't have any problem uh, playing the bass. <laughs> Wow, so is the bass, it's really just two two of the guitar strings are missing? Is that what it is? Yeah, if it's a four string bass, yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, if you take out the last two strings of a guitar, acoustic guitar, um, it, you can play like a bass. Bass is a little yeah. bit lower though, like at one octave lower, but you can totally play along with a lot of songs. Wow, I did not know that. Interesting. So you said your father had two guitars at home. Was it, do you come from a family of musicians? No. Uh, um, so uh, I have uh, I have three siblings, two sisters and a brother. Um, my dad played guitar, but you know he didn't do it full time. He was good, but you know he has a um, he has another job. Yeah. yeah. But he had a, a 12 strings guitar and he has a six string guitar, but the 12 string is like too big for me. So I play his six string. And, uh, and when I start playing music in Madagascar, my, my sister, uh, who, um, who is on my album actually, she sings like the last song on my album. She, she became, she joined a band in Madagascar for like five, six years and they became like really popular in Madagascar. Wow. Wow. So when you started and you, how old were you? Uh, I started playing, I played guitar when I was uh, maybe 13, 14, but I started playing bass when I was uh, 17. Wow. Yeah, I started late. You, you did start, I mean, that would be relatively late. Most people pick up their instruments when they're kids, but. Yeah, so are you especially playing? now. I see a lot of kids on YouTube, like, they like, six years old and they sound really good so are you so are you completely self-taught or did you take lessons did you get lessons from that bass player at church i wish i did no um i didn't um i didn't take any lessons um when i started playing the bass when i started playing guitar i um i tried to play like songs that i hear on the radio but i only knew like a couple chords but I hear like something different on the radio. So I tried to figure it out. And I thought that I came up with these chords. So I give them like names like D7 Patrick. <laughs> 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 I even wrote a book, uh, like, you know, like my own book with like a lot of weird names of chords. Wow, and then, you're completely self-taught. So you listen and you figured it out and you, you created your own code. Yeah, I thought I, I thought I came up with all that stuff. And I was like really disappointed when I when I found out that like all these chords like they already have names. <laughs> <laughs> when, when did you figure that out? <laughs> so the first church that they have the amazing bass player, somehow um, when I start to play at another church, they find out that uh, that that they are, you know that I play at another church, so they call me to play, we you know uh, in that church. When, when the main bass player is busy. So I start playing there. And then the guitar player from the church, he, uh, we had like two lessons. Like he showed me like the basic stuff on music. Like, you know, like C major is like C, E, G, like, you know, like very basic. Right. And then I was like, oh man. So all that stuff that I thought I invented <laughs> existed already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no but then after that you know I, I start to like really be, cu be curious about music so I start buying books and DVDs and like really learn I'm still learning now like I read a lot of books for like music wow so how I don't even know how old you, you are are you okay sharing how old you are oh yeah 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 I'm uh, I, I don't know. I'm 43 I'm 43. You're 43. I turned 43 in May. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank <laughs> happy you. Birthday, belated birthday. Thank wow. you. So you've been doing this now, if, we, if I do the math, 43 minus 17 is what? Uh, 26. 26 years. Wow. I should be better than, you know, me right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, it's pretty incredible. So, I mean... I want to talk about your, your current album. This album is your second album, right? That you yes. have put out. 
The first one was Joy. Yeah. And this one is Nifalia. Nifalia, Nifalia which means rejoice. Yes. Rejoice. Yeah. So you, you got a thing going on. You like the joy and then you got the rejoice. Yeah. So yeah. It's been a few years between those two albums. Like, what did it take for you to put this album together? Yeah, so a couple of things. Um, because, um, you know, I'm a, like independent artist. So I have to um, come up with funds to do it, to, you know what I mean? Like to pay studio. There's a lot of stuff that's, you know, that need uh, money. Yes. So that's one. The dog. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So that was one, but also uh, some of the artists, on, like the guest artists on my album, they, uh, they already like work with like a huge label. So, um, I kind of need like authorization uh, from their labels to, you know, for, for them to be featured on my album. So that, that took a while too, to, to do that. And then when I finally got the authorization, then I have to come up with ideas to like promote the album. And I, I didn't even come up with like anything, like I have like plans, but like I come up with something today and then tomorrow I'd be like, no, nah, I don't like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I, I was never satisfied with like what I should do. You know what I mean? But then when the coronavirus started, I was like, you know what? This album just like sat here for like years now. Maybe I should just release it and don't even worry about, you know, like big promotion because like it kind of helps me to still make some noise on uh, social media, even though I'm home every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, so I, I just decided to release the album. Like, yeah, it's been sitting there for a while. There's so much to cover because there's this whole journey that you have been on. Um, and you've gotten some major artists. Uh, and you've been working with major artists over the last few years. And then you've got major artists also involved in your album. Can you, who, can you kind of talk about some of the folks that you brought in to um, be on this album with you? Yeah, so um, there are a lot of great, um, you know, like really popular artists on the album. Uh, but let me start with the musicians first, because the musicians on the album, like they're like really known on uh, the musicians world too. Yeah. So for that, I have like, uh, like this guy on drums, Carlos Mendoza, he was like, the, the winner of huge drums competition in the US. Wow. So like all the drummers know him, he's amazing. And you know, my friend on guitar, Eli Menezes, he's... I've heard him, like, he's amazing. Yeah, he's probably one of the best, you know, I could be wrong again, but he's like definitely one of the best guitar players that I know, because he's, he's good on jazz, he's good on rock, he's good on everything. And he's really good at like getting really nice sound and everything. He's amazing. And then I have a, a Lenny Stern. He's a, she's an amazing guitar player. Uh, uh, anyway, so I, I have a lot of great musicians. But then the, I, I think the most popular is a uh, uh, Wyclef Jean. This dude has like I don't know how many Grammys, and he works with like everybody from Whitney Houston to to uh, Shakira. And now he worked with Patrick Andy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, <laughs> tell me this story. You, you have to tell me this story. Like, how did that happen? How did you meet Wyclef Jean and now, and then get him to join you on your album? Yeah. So, uh, you know, as you know, he was with the Fugees for years, right? So he has a, he has a bass player that played with him since the Fugees. And then at some point, you know, uh, he wanna, um, the other bass player started his own thing. So I Clef needed uh, another bass player. And um, so um, they called me. And it was funny because the first time when my, uh, the drummer, uh, Y Clef's drummer at the time, when he called me for the gig, I don't think he mentioned that it's for Y Clef Jean. I'm pretty sure he didn't mention it. He swear he did, but I, I, I don't remember. He didn't hear it if he did. Yeah, if he mentioned it, I didn't remember. Because when he called me, I'm like, yeah, sure, yeah, 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 man, I, I need work, let's do this. 
and then uh and then we uh, i had a gig with the drummer at, uh, at the apollo and then we saw uh uh white cliff's picture in there and he was like yeah man uh you, you uh, we're gonna meet him next week i was like what do you mean we're gonna meet him <laughs> she was like you know that the gig that i called you for is with white cliff right i was like dude he didn't say that <laughs> <laughs> So he's like, no, 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 I'm pretty sure I told you. But anyway, so I got to the rehearsal, our first rehearsal. I, I didn't listen to none of his songs. I like, I know like his famous songs, but like I wasn't prepared at all. But he got there and um, I think he likes my vibe or something. I heard he's like really picky, but when he likes you, he really likes you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like he knew I didn't know most of his songs. Like I knew some of them. You know what I mean? But like, like he, he calls one song and I'm like, ah, man, I don't know. So they like stop playing it and I pick it up and he just like the way, you know, my vibes and stuff. So like he, he hired me like right there and then. And, uh, and then when I start working on my album, uh, you know, like from then I start like traveling with him right. like all over the US when, and all over the world. When was, and, the, uh, when was that, Patrick? When did you, when, when did you connect and... Um, I think it was like 2010 or something like that, oh, 10 or 11. Yeah, 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 So in the beginning, um, cause I was working on my, um, uh, I, I couldn't travel outside the U S like in the beginning, I was like working on my paper. But then when, when, uh, when I start, you know, when I was, um, uh, so I, I just did like the U S gigs first. Right. And then, but I was already like working my paper. So when I got to my paper, then I traveled with him like all over the place. And, uh, and, and, and then I told him, like, I'm working on my album, man. Do you think you can, uh, uh, you can sing on it, like one song? So he said yes. But he probably didn't know that it's a Christian album. Like, he knew I, I was Christian. Right. Like, he, he told everybody, everywhere we go, like, like, yo, this dude is, like, straight up Christian. You better be careful around him. You know what I mean? So when I work on my album, he... Uh, he um he heard my first album and he knew that was a joy he knew that was a christian album but when i when i work on the new one um i guess he didn't really know it's going to be a christian album too so you know he said yes and then i i gave him the track but he like never listened to it in, in like the first two three weeks and then out of nowhere uh we're supposed to go somewhere um i don't know where like overseas and like the day before we're supposed to leave he called me like, hey, Patrick, uh, I know we live in tomorrow. I just realized I never did your track and I don't want to like see you tomorrow and I, I have nothing to give you. So can you please send me the track again so I can do something like now? I was like, yeah, sure. So I emailed him the track and like, I'm like praying like, I guess you still didn't know that it's Christian. <laughs> and then three hours later, he called me. She was like, dude, you didn't tell me it's Christian, but it's pretty good though. It's pretty good. <laughs> but you know, his dad is a pastor too. So, you know, oh. we talk about God all the time, like yeah. w w when we travel. Yeah. So, you know, he, he knows the deal. Oh, wow. So he's a pastor's kid. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. No, he, he knows a lot about the Bible. You'd be surprised because we, we, Beside people from church, I had I think I have a conversation about God the most with him than with uh, anybody else. Wow. That's amazing. So what's the song on the album that he sings on? Also the song is called uh, At Your Feet. Y'all know my name is Wyclef Sean a reformatator, right? Yeah. Pharisees, they plotting on the throne. He without sin cast the first stone. The Lord freed me from the devil's death. Told me that he ain't through with me yet. Yeah. So it's me and my maker, according to the good book. Only he can save you. Only he can save ya. At least that's what my pops told me. I'm sitting back, meditating, reading Timothy. Yeah, I trade that M16. For John 3:16, yeah. that Holy Ghost got me walking through the fire, like Moses, boy, I'm walking um, through the water. So on that song too, I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot to mention. Um, 
There's a piano player. He's from a Reunion Island, which is a French island next to Madagascar. So he's really known on the jazz scene in Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he came to, uh, uh, you know, he goes all over the world. But when he came to uh, New York, he, uh, he wanted this other famous bass player to play with him. And, uh, and then when he sent the songs to the famous bass player, he was like 12 songs. So the guy didn't want to learn 12 songs. So he was like, dude, it's too much. I can't do this. Uh, can you call this other bass player? So the, 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 other, the other bass player gave the piano player my number. So um, Mary Gerville, that's his name. Mary sent me an email like, hey, uh, uh, this bass player recommended you. Can you play with me in New York? So I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I grew up listening to, to his stuff. I couldn't believe like he wanted me to play with him. So when he sent me the songs, I, he was kind of hard. His songs are like hard. So for like two, three weeks, that's all I've been listening to. And, and then he came to New York. Uh, we had a gig on a Sunday night. I actually invited him to church on Sunday morning, uh, Times Square Church. And he came on a Sunday morning. He loved it. He, uh, after the service, he was like, man, I cried the whole time. I don't know why. So, you know, like, I, I, I didn't want to be like religious and like, Hey, this is the Bible. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. It's to the Holy Spirit, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and then we, and then we play uh, together Sunday night. And then since then we kept in touch. Like, you know, he went back to Reunion Island, France, like all over the world. But like he, he sent me WhatsApp sometime. And, um, and then I asked him like, hey, I have this song. Do you think you can, uh, play on uh, one of my songs and I didn't think he was, he was gonna say yes but he's like yeah sure send it to me so I sent it to him and uh, and then he got his drummer to play drums so like everything is like super African and like really authentic and and then he sent it to me and then I I, I sent it to uh, to Wyclef and he was amazing wow so I mean Patrick I'm, I'm going to now take it backwards a little bit. So when you, you're working at the warehouse for three years, <laughs> you're still teaching yourself and practicing on your own. So can you paint me that picture? So you, you're, you're doing the, you're just keeping your lights on in your house and you're feeding yourself through this job, but you're still working on your music. Were you composing at that time too, or like when would, when did you feel like you got your first real break? So um, even when I was in Madagascar, I always felt like I can um, like I can write music. Like I wrote songs since I was in Madagascar, mm-hmm. but I was like really serious about it because I feel like I can like easily do it, whatever that means. But like at the same time, I'm like. But why though? Like, who's gonna listen to this? You know what I mean? So even though I, I knew I can't write music, I, I wasn't really serious about it because I didn't have any platform to like show it to anyone. And then when I came here, when I work in a warehouse, uh, I don't think I wrote any songs. Like my focus is, I, I, I used to, when I go to work and I call my, my parents like every other day, I used to complain to my mom like, hey mom, if I don't do music full time in the next five years, I'm going back to Madagascar. I can't take this nine to five thing. <laughs> I never work in my life in Madagascar. And then now I'm in a warehouse moving boxes and all that stuff. So like nothing wrong with that. Don't get, you know, yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that. But I just never done that before. So I'm like, I gotta, I, I gotta do something. And I, I never wrote music in that period when I was in a, when I was working. But then I start playing um, at this Spanish church. Well, it's English church in Jersey, uh, but there are a lot of Spanish people in there. So they have like the main service in English uh, on Sunday morning, but on Sunday, Sunday evening, they have like a uh, Spanish service too, which is another thing. When I first got here, I didn't speak any English. So now I had to learn English and Spanish at the same time because a lot of people in Jersey speak Spanish. And I never heard of Spanish before. So I'm like, oh man, I'm in trouble. So anyway, so I started playing at that church. I never wrote music. And then um, 
when I when I decided to play music full time, I started meeting people, and you know I'm like I think I'm I'm tired of this nine to five thing. I'm gonna I just quit my job and like hope for the best, and um, and then I started meeting people in New York, and they they helped me to like play at different churches and stuff, and yeah. You went. I mean, most people. The advice would be before you quit your job, line up your next job. <laughs> Didn't do that at all. You just like quit your job, and you were like, "Okay, it." Yeah. It's, what were you exactly. thinking? It's crazy, cause uh, I mean, my way, my job at the warehouse didn't pay much to begin with. Yeah. So it didn't make a big difference, even if I quit it. Yeah. Um, so uh, when I quit my job, I, I like, I had, I only had one week money left, like one week. I didn't save any money at all. Um, Just rent and food. Probably not even food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure there was no food money in there. So uh, when I quit my job uh, in 2003, um, Back then, there is a song that's called uh, Because of Who You Are by Martha Munisi. Um, I listen to that song every day, like, I don't know, 20 times, because in the chorus, it says, Jehovah China, my provider. So I'm like, I just force myself to listen to it until I like believe it, you know what I mean? So I, I'm like listening to it. And the first couple of times, I'm like, I don't know, man. This is crazy. I might just have to go back to Madagascar. And, uh, and then I'm like, okay, uh, if I want to do this music full time, there are like too many amazing players in New York. I better practice. So that's all I did. I just stay home, sleep and practice all day, every day, every single day. I did nothing. And then the first week, the first week when I quit my job, someone called me like, hey, I got your number from such and such. Uh, do you want to go with us to this, uh, Washington, D.C.? I have this gig. And he was like a Christian, Christian Korean artist. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, sure. So I went there. I went with the band. And, uh, you know, we had fun. And, uh, and then a uh, couple so weeks played. after. So you played, huh? down, you played with them? Yeah, the, uh, okay. the same week that I that I quit my job, I got a call from like artists that I never heard before, and you know I play with them, and uh, and then a month after that, they called me for uh, like a recording for because uh, this this artist he has like a lot of artists with him like Korean uh, Christian artists, okay. so they want me to like record an album. Uh, that was like the first time in my entire life that I got a check like more than a thousand bucks. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I was like, this is so amazing. This is too much money. <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> yeah. And from that point on, like the, the very first week, I mean, you know, I, I was never like really like rich or anything, but like somehow there's always like money to like pay the rent and pay the bills. Like even like up to today, like it's crazy with all this coronavirus that there is no work. I don't know. I don't know how how uh, Joe is like gyring it. Yes. <laughs> I think there's another song in that. <laughs> Joe but gyring it. <laughs> yeah, you should write that song. Don't even give me credit. I don't want to be involved. No, I think that. it came out of your mouth. I'm just giving you the affirmation. Go for it. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And so, um, so you go from warehouse to now you're starting to get gigs through this i mean network that's starting to form around you um when did you feel like was your next big break um this is like now taking you to the next level that's a really good question because um you know like right now no one knows you know the future, like literally, you know what I mean? Um, I'm really happy with just where I am right now, meaning, you know, playing a church and have my own band and like, 
playing with like a lot of different bands. But what I would like to call big break is like if if I have like if I get to play my own music on like a lot of festivals or like a lot of you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Whatever happens, happens. I don't know. <laughs> It's I don't know the answer to that question. Even, it's so interesting how you're even answering the question because it, it's not the kind of the answer I was expecting. Because um, I was like, when, when was your next break? And you're already thinking like, do you feel like you haven't had another break or you're, you're looking at the big, big break? Which is, I mean, because to me, when I, when even in your story so far, when you're talking about you know, your friend then introducing you to White Club Sean, and now you're touring around with White, White Club Sean. I'm like, that's pretty huge, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and I, other I, artists I, that you have, um, you know, you've been on TV, you've performed on major uh, national shows with bands and artists that are pretty well known. Yeah. I'm I, I guess, but you I, I mean, look at I, it that way. No? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm just happy that I can survive like playing music. You know what I mean? And um, like, I really don't see. I would like to get more of those gigs. You know, like playing with like famous people. Like that's fine and everything. But I'm like really happy with, uh, um, you know, like especially playing at church, that's like my main thing. Like if I can just keep doing that, like if that's there every week, I'm like totally happy with that. And you know, of course I need to make money in between, you know what I mean? Like playing weddings here, playing festival here. Um, but you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I think I already have my big break playing for God already, you know what I mean? And again, I, I would like to make, to get like more festivals with my own band too that i really would love that and i'm trying to work to, to get to that level but even if that doesn't happen i'm you know it's all good Ambitious people and people who are very talented, whether they're musicians, artists, or actors, and, and business people or whatever. It's always about they want more, they want more, they want more uh, salary, they want more notoriety, more fame, more recognition, or something, right? So they're always after that. Um, and so when I listen to you, and I, I, you know, you and I, I think, share the same kind of mindset. Uh, it's it's more your your when you say you want to do more festivals it's not for yourself but it's more about the ability to share you know what you feel you have you've been given in order to share that with others yeah exactly with as many yeah. people as possible yes yeah that that's the whole point why why i started my my own band anyway like when i when i want to when i work on my first album i just want to have like christian album that has like madagascar Madag i can't even pronounce my own country <laughs> madagascar feel you know what i mean yeah and um and uh, you know same thing like when when, when uh, like i want to play on like festivals so i can like share uh not so much my music or Madagascar music, but yes, the music, but with the message, more, more so the message than the music, you know? But I would like to share the message with my music, though. And what, I don't you, know if that makes any sense. What, when you say that, what, do you, what are you imagining? What does that look like? Okay, so like, let's say, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be like gospel festival, but like, maybe like a jazz festival like you know uh i don't know a world music festival but then next thing you know we start like singing about you know the things that we believe like god and jesus and that happened a lot of times actually that you know i play in a uh, like a jazz clubs and uh, like first the owner of the jazz doesn't really know 
the owner of the clubs that didn't know. Uh, he kind of knew. They kind of knew that that it's Christian, but they didn't like realize that it's like a hundred percent. Like words. yeah, like yeah. yeah, like the word is like it's not just talking about good vibes. It's talking about I worship you, Jesus. You know what I mean? So a, a lot of times when most of the times. I would say all the times so when you play at the jazz clubs, yeah. um, they they find out that it's Christian. The owners of the club find out that it's Christian, but they also like the music, so they didn't mind it. So we always get like calls back, like, "Hey, uh, you wanna do you wanna come back to our clubs?" So yeah, it's they're not, they're not getting upset or anything, but they no, none of them get upset. Like I didn't hear uh, it's. Sometimes it's uh, I hate to say this, but sometimes it's like um, my uh, my friends who uh, and they like re real friends like they worry about me. My friends who, uh, who some of them who go to church, they the one who tell me like, dude, I don't think it's a good idea for you to play at a jazz club. But you know they have good intention. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you know. <laughs> I don't know. I know yeah. it's but, it's there. There's always yeah. That's a but whole it's all good. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just like, you know what? Yeah, I'm. I'm not here to please anyone. Like, I feel like whatever I'm gonna do, yeah. someone is won't be happy with it. So I might as well, you know, as long as like I'm. Yeah, it's at the core of who you are and what you're doing and what you're producing, what you're putting out there, doesn't doesn't shift with the environment that you're in. You are you are bringing your light. You're not dimming your light by being in some other atmosphere. In fact, you're bringing light into places that right. would otherwise be dark. And so, if you're yeah. being invited into those dark places, you're not dimming your light to conform with the darkness. You are actually being light in those places in a way that they never expected. Yeah, you see it like way better than the way I see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are opportunities, right? It's being mm -hmm. true. Yeah. You're being true to yourself and to your and, and to your faith. You know, right. So yeah. No matter where you're at, you're not changing because the environment has changed. And you know what? People even respect you more when, when you do that. Even like people who have like the opposite view, you know what I mean? Like they, they, they see me doing that, and they, you know, they don't like what I do, but they like respect it. So yeah. What was your inspiration for the Mifalia album? Uh, so um, on the Mifalia, so um, when I released the album jo uh, Joy like ten years ago, um, when we start playing those songs live, you know, because I have like amazing musicians on my band. Uh, they they always like to change things. Like one song sounds like like this way on the album, but when we play live, it's like completely different. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I think I should record like the way we play live. That that, that should be like my next album. Um, so I am on the actual song Joy. Um, uh, on the chorus, it says "Joy mi falie," which is, you know, joy rejoice. So um, I just took that the "mi falie" thing and like named the, the second album uh, "mi falie." So like basically, the the "mi falie" album is like um, it's like the same type of music of joy, but more more live version. You know what I mean? Because okay. on Joy, we, we we like sat down a lot in, in front of a computer and like tried to get things right. Like the, uh, some songs have like bass for like, I don't know, 10 tracks of bass. But that's impossible, like playing that live. Right. There's only one bass player. Like, how come I hear like 10, you know, 10 basses? So for, for, for the Joy, um, um, I, 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 I just wanted to have like like real band playing uh, playing like you know real music it's more, it's more real it's more raw I mean they're both real but this is more raw yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, cool what's your favorite song uh, my favorite song it has to be um, the last song uh, it's um, his eyes in a sparrow but in Malagasy um, I first heard a song in Madagascar the uh, Adventist Church Madagascar sing that song so when, when uh, 
uh, I have like a lot of Adventist uh, friends and family in Madagascar. So, you know, I went to an Adventist church and I heard that song and I didn't know it was a big English song that they translated to, to Malagasy. But when I heard it, I, I really like it. And then when I when I got to this country, I found out that it's like an old hymn, you know, like Whitney Houston sing it, Lauryn Hill, everybody sing that song. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna call my uh, Adventist friend in Madagascar. Like, hey, can you please send me the Malagasy lyrics because uh, I, I wanna I wanna sing this song in the in my language. And then um, and then my sister, she lives in Madagascar, but she came to New York for like two three weeks. So like uh, a month before she came, I asked her if she can sing uh, that song on my album. So she said yes. So yeah, uh, I that's definitely my favorite song. I really. I, I, I really like the song, but then my sister sings it, it's, a, it's my favorite song. There's another song too, it's called uh, Dera, which means uh, praise. Uh, you know, so uh, there, are, there, there are like two versions on the album. One is in English and uh, one is in, uh, in my language, in um, Malagasy. So uh, I have a friend uh, in Madagascar, a drummer from, from the church with the bass player that I like. Yeah. Uh, I sent him a message on Facebook like, hey man, can you, uh, can you please translate the, uh, this English song? To uh, to uh, you know, to Malagasy, so he translated it, and then I was like, uh, "There is this style of music in Madagascar. It's called uh, Hiragasi, which means uh, songs in Madagascar. Like if I like translate it like words by words, but the style of music is like a lot of people, like a choir, just like gather together and sing a song. Like they don't care about you know bass or anything, even just a cappella and maybe like." some percussion so, so that's how they, they sing that's this hiragasi style of music is so i asked my friend like hey can you please get uh, a lot of singers from like um uh, from a church and like record this song like a hiragasi style mm -hmm. so he got a lot of singers from like some tiny church in like small villages in madagascar and uh, uh I send him like money to like rent a studio and everything and to rent a car to take them from that small villages to, to a studio in the capital of Madagascar. Yeah. And uh, so they went to a studio, you know, and recorded and send me the, the recording. I almost cry when I hear it because it's so, they're not professional singers, yeah. but like the, it's so authentic, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, like at some point, it's like slightly out of tune. Like they don't end at the same time, like the phrase, you know, like, but it's, I mean, they can sing though, but they're not professional, but they can like really sing. And well, the first couple of times when I listen to the song, like I almost cry a couple of times, like, man, this is, this reminds me of Madagascar a lot. <laughs> Those two, they're like my favorite, but I like the one with my sister more. Yeah, oh, I love that a sibling, a sibling love. That's awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, my siblings, they rock. Are you the middle and the youngest, or where are you in the in the pack? No, I, I'm the oldest. And You're the oldest. Me, okay. Yeah, me, a sister, a brother, and a sister. But they're all like way smarter than me. <laughs> I think you did okay, Patrick. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, yeah, could be better, but yeah. <laughs> so how, um, so with this whole COVID situation, how have you been using the time? When the COVID started, um, th uh, there is a type of music that I heard grew growing up in Madagascar that I really liked, uh, the guitar player from Madagascar, but um, 
he was like, uh, uh, his, the way he played is like too hard for me. You know what I mean? So when this whole thing started, I'm like, you know what? Now is the time to figure out like the way this guy plays guitar. So I've been practicing a lot of like Madagascar guitar stuff uh, since the, the, you know, the, yeah, the lockdown. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually, um, there's going to be like a, pro because of that, I start like writing like new songs. But uh, I wrote it on guitar first, and, you know, because I transcribed this guy and uh, I, I learned like a lot of his, I, I still don't know how to play like him. I don't think I would ever be able to play like him, but I learned some of his stuff. So I started like writing uh, songs and then I tried to figure out how to play it on bass. So now uh, I, I know how to play like some music from Madagascar, but like I have to tune the bass a lot of different ways to be able to play it. Wow. So yeah. Yeah, it's they it's crazy. They like your guitars differently. Yeah, this this guy. Yeah, he um he tuned his guitar like he has probably more than like tw twenty ways of tuning the guitar. I only figured out like three or four. Right. So uh, when when I try to play it on bass, like there is no way like you can play it on bass if you don't tune it like the same way he he tunes it. You know what I mean? Wow. So yeah, I'm I'm still learning it, but but I start like writing some stuff. So let's see, let's see what happens. All right, album three coming out soon. <laughs> yeah, maybe an EP, maybe not a full album. <laughs> <laughs> for now, so how would people be able to access your album? For now, um, uh, uh, they can go to my Facebook page, which is Patrick Andy Bass. I have two pages. My personal page is Patrick Andy Bass, and my music page is Patrick Andy. And uh, I post something about my music in there like almost every day. Uh, and also my uh, IG, my name is Patrick Andy. And uh, yeah, you know what's funny? There is another Andy, uh, an artist from Jamaica. <laughs> With your name? Patrick. Yeah, his name is Patrick. I, I, I'm pretty sure he was first because, you know, I don't know. So, like, sometime when I go to, like, uh, uh, when I type Patrick Andy on, uh, you know, Google, a lot of time, like, you see my name and then you see his. And he has, like, one song that says uh, Ja, like Jehovah in Jamaican or something. Oh, really? <laughs> it, it's too. quite confusing. Oh, wow. Well, maybe you have to get the two Patrick Andes together and see what happens. <laughs> That's a really good idea. <laughs> That's, uh, I didn't yeah, think of that. That could be interesting. So, yeah. album, where's the album available? Right now, um, it's only on my band camp. Okay. Uh, I forgot <laughs> my real address, but I think if you type band camp and then Patrick yeah. Andy. Okay. Yeah. So, look uh, for Patrick Andy on band camp. Yeah, and it, I mean, you know, it, it's gonna be on uh, on uh, on uh, Apple Music and Spotify, like maybe like November or something. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. So, do you have any uh, anything that you would tell people who might consider checking it out? What can they expect? Uh, if you never heard of Madagascar music before then this is going to be like completely different from like anything that they heard before because it doesn't sound like um, like the usual music that you hear in um, you know in the US but if you're like curious to listen to music from Madagascar with some New York touch then definitely check it out <laughs> and hopefully the lyrics is going to bless you too Thanks so much, Patrick. I really appreciate your time today. This is awesome. This is probably the longest conversation we've ever had. <laughs> right? Thanks for having me. Look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you. Thank you, Piggy, and thanks everyone for listening. <laughs>